I've said it before and I'll probably say it a hundred times more, but the guns in Black Ops 4 Zombies, uh, they suck. So, I'm gonna try and get to round 50 using one. Today's subject is the Sorg 9mm. I like to think of this thing as the yappy, annoying younger brother to the Strife pistol. The Sorg is okay. It's nothing incredible by any means. It's a high fire rate, low to medium damage depending on range, machine pistol, SMG kind of thing. It's also a gun that, that I have hardly ever used. Uh, like seriously, uh, in the five or so years Black Ops 4 has been out, I have used this gun approximately seven times, meaning that I have exactly zero attachments unlocked. So, um... This should be fun. <laughs> the map of choice for today is Alpha Omega. Yeah, uh, really, really doing a number on the uh, the old mental with this one, you know? <laughs> the reason I chose Alpha Omega is simply because this is the only map where I know where the wall by is. Like, straight up. <laughs> it's directly next to spawn. It's nice and easy to get to. Plus, it's quite an easy train topside in the old Nuketown area on this map. So it all comes together nicely. So we spawn in with our Sorg and we get to work. And before I forget to mention it, uh, yes, we do have our special weapons on Black Ops 4. And yes, I am allowed to use it. However, I am only allowed to use it when I am completely out of ammo, just to kind of even things out. I know I could just not use it at all, uh, but shut up. <laughs> first few rounds that we spend getting points. I also spent the first few rounds getting to grips with this gun, because without attachments, it's kind of booty. Five rounds go by and now is the best time to leave spawn, mainly because I'm running low on ammo. <laughs> Shortly later, power is turned on and the next step is getting downstairs and activating Pack-a-Punch. Now I hate doing this step even when I've got a good gun, uh, but this time I had to Sorg, so instead of fighting my way through the next 60 seconds, I did the true Giga Chad game move uh, and I ran away for 60 seconds just straight up run around in a circle because I was way too scared to get into a fight with these juiced up zombies in this lockdown however lockdown done and I now have to ventilate some houses and after playing this map for you know, the first time in quite a while uh, I see why a lot of people tend to avoid this map because the first house I enter to ventilate, I end up taking it down. I'm just stood here minding my own business when all of a sudden three O zombies come out of nowhere and just beat my ass into the ground. So, yay. Now that I had it down on the board and also noticing that the Sorg was beginning to struggle on only round seven, I made it priority number one to get these houses ventilated as quickly as possible so I could get to the Pack-a-Punch. And after a couple minutes at Struggle Town, all four houses were no longer stingy and neither was my Sorg, as we now had the Stella 92. I'm sure that's in reference to something, but I have no idea what. Uh, it's still a cool name nonetheless, though. I may have gotten myself a pack-a-punched gun, but there was still a good amount of work left to do before I could begin to relax, as I still needed to get all four of my perks. I won't lie, uh, I never really know what perks to use on this game, if I'm being honest, as most of them just seem kind of useless. But my perks for the day were Quick Revive, Bandolier Bandit, Stamina Up, I mean, of course, and finally, Winter's Whale. Winter's Whale may have been my last perk on my hotbar, but it was the first perk bought today. It may be Widow's Wine's baby brother, but goddamn, it's a great perk. Next up on round 11, both Bandolier Bandit and Quick Revive were picked up. Bandolier Bandit may be a bit of an odd shout for a perk, but those extra 100 or so bullets for this gun really do come in handy. And I mean, Quick Revive is Quick Revive. You can't go wrong with the old trusty blue safety juice. And finally, Stamina Up was acquired the following round. It's round 12 and everything is looking good. All that is needed now was to fully upgrade the Sorg, which was done by round 14. At this point, the Sorg is cruising through these zombies and rounds. You know, as you would hope from a fully upgraded weapon at such a low round. In fact, the Sorg bulldozes its way through the remaining teen rounds and most of the early 20s. But... There is a big butt coming. It did begin to slow down as I reached the mid 20s. Don't get me wrong, it blitzed the early rounds, but when push came to shove, this thing comes to a halt and it does so fast. The remaining 20s very quickly became a struggle as I close in on round 30, but with a little patience and a little luck, 
uh, we cross over into the 30s. Even though this gun was basically on its knees at the moment, it was still finding a way to claw through these zombies. But all good things have to come to an end eventually, and on round 30 itself, I end up taking my second down of the game. I get hit a few many times, and a jolting jack just straight up shoots me in the face just as I'm about to make my escape, sending me down. Thankfully, you only lose two perks when you're down a Black Ops 4, so the recovery was nice and easy for once. Things began to get even worse once I hit round 34. Firstly, I also can't believe I made it to this round with this gun. And secondly, from this point on, I'd have been better off throwing sticks at these zombies. This gun may look like a pea shooter, and from this round onwards, it takes that literally. The amount of bullets it takes to kill individual zombies from here on is nuts. But I continued to soldier on. It was also once I crossed into the 30s that I began to use my special weapon more often, as I was running out of ammo almost every two minutes. However, on round 37, it would not be able to save me, as I still had plenty of ammo in the sword. I get myself trapped and I try my hardest to fight my way out of it, but it's no use and I take my final down of the game. Round 37 with nothing but the Sorg is pretty decent, but I wasn't done there. You see, I managed to hit round 37 without any attachments, and as I'd gotten through quite a few rounds, I unlocked quite a few attachments. So I ran it back. Now because I'd already hit 37 rounds, I wasn't trying to go crazy or anything, so I booted up Tagda Toten. This map is very quickly becoming my new dear machine for whenever I just want a nice easy challenge. Straight away I made one huge mistake, uh, the sight. It's awful on this gun. I like the holographic on tag rifles, so I thought, you know, surely it'll be fine on an SMG too. Uh, yeah, no. This thing is not good on this gun. But I was too lazy to restart, so I just kind of got on with it. The other attachments I had equipped was Fast Mags 1 and 2, Quick Draw, and the Suppressor. I may have unlocked almost all of the attachments in one game, but I still didn't have the ELO site or the Operator mod, which is why they aren't to be seen. And some of you may be questioning my choice with the Suppressor, considering the damage drop-off, uh, but I am a slut for those shiny green drops. Round 9 and all of the power is turned on, and the Golden Packer Punch is active. Over I go, and now I have a fully maxed out gun on round 9. Round 13, and I head back up top to the facility as I need to get my final perk. Uh, but instead of getting my final perk, I end up taking my first down because I just wasn't uh, paying attention and the zombies all ganged up on me and just bullied me to the ground. So, great start. <laughs> End of the round, I pick up Winter's Well and head back to spawn, where I decided to open up the path to Quick Revive and the Sorg Warby just to save me having to run all the way around and back every time I need ammo. For some reason, I also didn't repurchase stamina up until round 16, uh, which also almost got me downed again. From here on, it was business as usual. That was until I hit the mid-twenties, and I began to notice that the Sorg was actually doing way worse this time around than the last. Probably down to the fact that it originally doesn't have great range, and with the added suppressor, I, I basically halved what was already there. And, you know, as I said, it wasn't a lot in the first place. So now, my bullets were doing just about nothing once they'd gone about seven feet out of the gun. The gun continued to struggle more and more as the rounds went up, but I didn't have to worry about it for much longer, as on round 32, I end up taking my final down of the game. I gotta say, for the first two ever proper uses of this gun from me, it performed way above what I was expecting. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you all in the next one.